So when I was in secondary school, um, being from Tipperary, we used to play a wee bit of hurling. And uh, there was one guy in my class. Now, he had, he had repeated a couple of years. So we were 16, 17. I think he was about 25 or something. So he was a share bigger than the most of us uh, from Holy Cross, a wonderful, a wonderful holy place. But I'm not sure if that grace touched his heart much because when you were standing there with your hurley, he would run up behind you and say, if you touch that ball, I'll kill you. And I, and I think he meant it. I, I think he did. And uh, when then the ball, you know, the, the puck out would come and the ball would be coming down for you, you'd hear something like an, an apocalyptic Neanderthalic roar coming. And, and you'd hear the hurdy swipe there, swipe out. Whoo, whoo, whoo. And you'd go, okay, just take it, just take it, take it, just take, just take it. So, and often when you watch the Euros or things, we see the importance of a good ref. You know, you see the importance of a ref, and you know that should have been a foul, that should have been a send off, is that a yellow card, a red card, eh, just a warning. I mean, the, the, the ref is very important. I was really hoping that the ref would see my kidney, my, my kidneys getting beaten to death at the butt of a hurley. Uh, but we 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 see the need for these things in ordinary things, like in sport. In school, we see the need for principals, for responsibles, for vice principals, for department heads. You need that. You need that. So if something goes wrong, well. If you have a question, who do you ask? And if something goes wrong, well, who is responsible? While in one hand, in the school, we would probably say, yes, we are all responsible for <clears throat> the education of the children. At the same time, there are some specific responsibles for different roles. And that's necessary. That's a good thing. Okay? So if we apply this to, to the church, somehow it, it seems that the, the, we'd say the hierarchy in the church gets awful bad press. Right? The hierarchy, bad hierarchy. But your Tesco's has a hierarchy. Right? You've got a branch manager, you've got an aisle manager, you've got a department manager. Like the next person up, that's it's a hierarchy. Every school has one, every bank has one, every, every group, society, it all has one. It's normal. It's a, a hierarchy isn't a problem. Uh, maybe that the people in the, these positions might not be the best, might, might not make the best decisions, but the problem isn't having management. The problem isn't having hierarchy. The problem is maybe the managers falling short of the mark, which does happen. I'm sure if you've worked in industry you probably, or in a school, you've probably seen it yourself at times. Bad decisions get made. Listen to our first reading. This is God, and, and he reminds us a new, on numerous occasions, he says, it is the Lord who speaks, which means listen up. right? And he's speaking to priests. Doom for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering, and you have not taken care of them. Right. I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. Right. I wouldn't call it a threat. Well, actually, I would call it a threat. <laughs> like, that's, that's the Lord speaking to priests and saying, lads, do not mess this up. You, you have a position of responsibility. And not just for the management of property or money or those kind of things. Those kind of things come and go. Uh, but you have the, the, a position of responsibility for souls. For souls. For eternal salvation. It's, I, I like this reading because I think priests should never get into the, the mentality of, I have a collar, I've been ordained, I do my little bit of mass here and there, a bit of baptisms on a Sunday, whatever it may be, we're good to go. That's not what the Lord says. That's not what the Lord says. He calls priests to, to unite the people in love for him. So not just to be a, a, an administrator of sacraments, which is good and necessary, but if it's only that, you see, you, you can administer sacraments to people with no faith. Or the sacraments can be given to people with no faith, who, and it, it doesn't lead them to faith. So you can be receiving Holy Communion, but not believing it. Going to Mass and having no idea what's happening up here. So we have a hugely, hugely important role. Not because, not because of us, but because of God. And in, in the Lord's mind, right, right from the beginning, the Lord has always associated priesthood and fatherhood. Priesthood and fatherhood. This is very, very important because the, the, the argument you often hear today is that um, maybe Jewish mentality would have been quite maybe 
sexist or that, so there aren't any, there aren't any women priests now because our Jewish brothers back in the day didn't ordain women, so it was a cultural thing which now should be updated. But that's actually not true. If you, if you re read scripture, uh, there was a, a, a goddess, the goddess of fertility. Never Google that because images come up that aren't really good. Okay, goddess of fertility, Astarte. You'll remember it because it's got, it's, got, it's got tart in the name, so Astarte, uh, you'll remember. Goddess of fertility. And she was a goddess who had priestesses. So and they were rampant in uh, Egypt and Canaan, so modern day Holy Land. They had pre goddesses and priestesses. So back in Jesus' time, there were goddesses and priestesses. And still, the Lord chose to ordain men. Now, why is this? It has nothing to do with men being in any way superior. No. No, no, it's, but it's to do with the association of priesthood and fatherhood. Fatherhood. So priests are supposed to reflect the fatherhood of God. We're supposed to reflect the fatherhood of God. So when people look at a priest, they say, well, look, he, he's loving and he's merciful. So that helps me understand that God is loving and merciful. That God the Father is loving and merciful. When a priest celebrates Mass, he says, this is my body. So such we loan our body to Jesus for, the, for that celebration. We, we work, as it's called, in, in persona Christi, in the, in, in the person of Christ. And we loan our body to Jesus so he can say in us those words, this is my body given for you. So it's nothing to do with being better or worse or any, any, any of those kind of things, but it's to do with the association of priesthood and fatherhood. And the reading today is very clear, the, the, the association of, of priesthood and, and being a shepherd. Okay, that's, that's very clear in the in the, the psalm as well, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I should want. I've given this example before, but we're used to maybe Christmas pageants, uh, or Christmas, play, well, maybe there haven't been any in two years, but uh, our, our Christmas plays where the, the kids get dressed up as shepherds and they put a little tea towel on their heads and it's all kind of cute and nice. And uh, they, all these little lambs bouncing around and it's all cute. But back in the day, shepherds had a very, very rough job because you have to stay with your flock. You have to stay out. They're, they're a little better equipped for the weather than we are. Big woolly coats on them, keeps them warm in the winter. We just have beards. Uh, so it, you know, we're not really equipped for that kind of weather. For the heat, for the cold, the rain, it's just miserable. But the shepherd would stay with them in all of those conditions. And at night then he'd get them into a, a temporary kind of a, a paddock built out of branches, and he would lie in front of the gateway so that literally, if anyone were to steal his sheep, it would be over his dead body. And if wild dogs, jackals, bears, whatever it was, would come, he would have to fight them. So this, is, this, 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 is, this was the role of a shepherd. And you might think, well, all of that just for sheep. But that's what they did. That was, that, that was their job. And so they, they would sacrifice themselves for their sheep. And then while the sheep are grazing, the shepherds would be scanning the horizon, scanning the horizon for, for danger, scanning the horizon for weather. Is there a storm coming? Is there rain coming? Do we need to get into shelter? Do we need to get out? You know. So while the sheep are busy doing their thing, the shepherd is doing something else. The shepherd is watching out for, for their overall welfare. The sheep's job is to get fat. The shepherd's job is to make sure that they have everything they need. And so a priest's job is a such similar, to scan the horizon for danger. Are there thoughts, ideas, mentalities, ideologies that are taking us away from God. Lord knows there's an abundance of them today. So, and then we're supposed to alert the people. So we're hearing that this is the way to go. It's not. You know, like, for example, in today's world, like, all you have to do to be happy is pursue your passions. If you feel something is good, then do it. If you feel something is bad, well, then it's probably not. But we think, but that's, in reality, that doesn't work because often doing the right thing is hard. And often doing the wrong thing is just so easy. So no, it's, it doesn't work in reality to say, if it feels good, do it. Adultery might feel wonderful, right? Don't do it. So it's, 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 it's the pastor's job, the shepherd's job, to as such scan the horizon for danger and alert the flock. Again, it's the role of a shepherd, the role of a father. And that's, this, this is divinely ordained. So ultimately, if, if, if we kind of have a problem with that, Ultimately, take it up with God, because he decided it. <laughs> His decision, not mine. But it works. And you will notice today that as, as fatherhood is attacked and as fatherhood is weakened, 
priesthood will go the same way. Often you see, especially with younger families these days, uh, kids who might not know their dads, or the dad is there sometimes, not there other times, or, or their mom has a new boyfriend and now he's kind of the dad role, but then he's too immature to actually be a good father. And, and so kids grow up without dads and haven't got a strong relationship with God as father. They prefer to maybe relate to God as, as spirit or as energy, because fatherhood, no, my father let me down. And so as fatherhood becomes weakened, priesthood becomes more and more misunderstood because they're linked, fatherhood and priesthood. In the Jewish Passover, it was the, the father of the house who represented the, the household and he had this, a such priestly role to bring the lamb to Jerusalem for slaughter, for the, the Passover sacrifice. And he would hold the lamb. Block the kids' ears. He, he would... <laughs> He would hold the lamb as the priest came over and, and, uh, and the life would drain out of the lamb and the father, as a, as a priest, is, is, is holding this lamb who he probably has grown quite uh, attached to over the preceding weeks. And now he feels that lamb be offered, be sacrificed and die in his arms. Then he brings it back to the family to, to eat. And so priesthood for, 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 for Jews was, was very clearly understood as being linked to fatherhood and being linked to sacrifice, self-sacrifice. It's not about positions of authority or pedestals or anything like that. It's about service. As a priest, you serve. As a father, you serve. As a shepherd, you serve. And when we, the more we understand that as priests, the, the healthier our priesthood will be. So dear brothers and sisters, we must pray for our priests. We must pray for our priests. And we must pray for the renewal of the priesthood. And we must pray for a new generation of priests to be raised up. Priests who, who, who love the Lord. It's quite simple, really. Priests who love the Lord. Priests who love spending time with him. Priests who ask for his direction, the direction of the Holy Spirit in their lives and in their ministries, so that they can do what they're supposed to do, be a shepherd, and guide the people to God, but primarily by example. And we pray for the strengthening and the, and the renewal of, of fatherhood too. We pray for the renewal of the church. And we pray, Lord, that all priests will be priests after your own heart. That they may recognize the great responsibility they have before you. And that everything they are asked to do, you provide the grace for them. Amen.